Six. Check, yeah. check. Number. All right, thanks. All right, so do you want to clap to sync him up and that's rolling? <coughs> there you okay. Go. So jonathanmorrow.org. Yeah. Impact360.com. Dot org. Dot org. Oh, yep. and, mm -hmm. All right. So I'm Travis. I'm with Tactical Faith, a uh, nonprofit, Christian nonprofit out of Birmingham, whose purpose is to encourage the life of the mind of the church. And I'm with Jonathan Morrow here at uh, True Story 19, hashtag yeah. True, True Story 19 with Maven. And Jonathan Morrow has his own site, jonathanmorrow.org, yep. and is with works with impact360.org, yep. uh, uh, an organization focused on training students, preparing them for college, mm -hmm. and maybe the world of ideas. Absolutely. And you speak a lot about worldview, yeah. right? So right I talk about the Bible, worldview, basically how do we know Christianity is true, how mm -hmm. do we live that out, uh, what, what Christians believe, why it matters, how to live it out. So we work with high school students in our summers, and we have a nine-month gap here, Impact 360 Fellows. And then I do writing and speaking and teaching and all that. So I'm also an adjunct professor with Biola University. I oh, teach excellent. a master's yeah. program there. So. Yeah. And so a little bit about yourself, if you can give a quick rundown, like how you became a believer and why this matters to you. Yeah, for sure. So I, I became a follower of Jesus at 17. And within about a month, um, there was people in the youth group that began investing in me and mentoring me. But then I went off to college, and that's really where the questions started for me. So I had a lot of anti-Christian professors, people who at least weren't very friendly to Christianity. I took a religious uh, studies course and literature course, which ended up being a lot of the questions that I came back to yeah. when I wrote uh, my book, Questioning the Bible, 11 Major Challenges to Bible's Authority to help deal with some of that. Um, so a lot of my journey through the college years um, I documented, because I, I told my wife, if, if, if God ever lets me write a book, I'd love to write one about everything I wish I would have known about the college years. And that was the, the book, Welcome to College. And so mm -hmm. those are such pivotal times and seasons. And my passion really was, I grew so much during that time. I worked with, I was, um, you know, part of Campus Crusade for Christ, starting up on our campus and discipleship groups and programs and everything else. And that was a huge part of my journey. And I saw how important those years were in the high school and college years to the trajectory of students and their life choices. And so that's why I wanted to come back and work with that age group, go get further training, two mm -hmm. master's degrees and a doctorate and everything else to mm -hmm. be able to go, hey, this is really true. Here's why. But imagine living for life during this season and beyond how much influence and uh, that you can have and what a difference that can make in your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we, we have a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of parents have kids preparing mm -hmm. them for college and and part of the talk you had with the adults was you're preparing them for sat you're preparing for football yeah. basketball whatever it is um are we preparing them for what they're going to face when they leave when they come out from under your wing mm -hmm. when they stop living the faith of their parents right and enter a world that is in many ways uh you know, very oppressed, very it attacks the faith quite a bit. There's not much, you know. Um, it's either apathy or attack, and both yeah. are both are dangerous. Both, yeah, to a it's, faith it's that's a question about which one's the most dangerous. But yeah. yeah, they're both very dangerous. So, what are the major what are the major issues that you see students facing when they're entering college? Yeah, so I think the default thing that all students, whether Christian or otherwise, private school, public school, home school, doesn't matter, is they're kind of default relativists mm -hmm. unless they've been equipped out of it. So they kind of have this true for you but not for me mindset. I don't want to be judgmental, and they just kind of quietly relativize that faith, and then their faith gets quiet once they hit campus. That's one of the kinds of students I see a lot of. One of the big questions, it's always a perennial question that we all struggle with once we live enough life or we encounter tragedy is how can God be all-powerful and all-loving mm -hmm. and all-good, and yet there still be evil and injustice mm -hmm. and all this pain and suffering that we see. How does that work in the Christian worldview? Now, I think the Christian worldview best answers that. But it's still emotionally challenging, and it's right. still. But it's the best answer out there. I mean, the atheism atheism has the problem of good. You know, Eastern religions. Well, what is good and evil? That those evaporate. So, Christianity, you have a savior enter into that and do something about it. That's powerful. And then also the questions of sexuality and gender are massive for this generation. If you've not thought about those things, you need to, um, yeah. because it's part of. And here's how the way I would get at it is: step back and say, look, if there really is a God who exists. Um, and he designed things for a purpose, then wouldn't we want to know what his purpose is and connect those things too? So it's not just this moralistic rule book that you're trying to keep people from loving people the way they want to. No, it's, you know, therefore, if there really is a good God who loves you and, and created sexuality for a purpose, then we ought to listen to that and lean into it. And so that's the conversation right. that I think we need to put that in the context of recognizing 
that all of us are broken and we just express our brokenness in different ways. So we can move with compassion into that, but we, we can't say things that the Bible doesn't say. And so we need to be ready for those conversations. Right, right. And uh, I think that that's, that's a really important one. And it, it seems, I mean, for those of us who are old enough, we can remember 10 years ago, this didn't feel like it was going to be this sort of thing, uh, this kind of problem, the issues of sexuality. It's and moved all very kind of fast culturally. Things have changed dramatically. And I think a lot of parents may not recognize that's taken place, particularly in Bible Belt mm-hmm. sort of areas. Um, but it really has, and it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a black eye on Christianity culture, from the culture perspective, is uh, look how backward you are, you know, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so can we prepare ourselves to stand there and say, it is the love of God that's calling you from this. It's not because I hate you, right? And so this, yep. these issues of hatred and bigotry. Yeah, and those are those are slogans, and um, unfortunately they get reinforced by a very small number of, of Christians who get a lot of airtime. Yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, it's a call to discipleship. Mm-hmm. It's, am I going to follow Jesus and his call for holiness in my life, whatever my struggle is? That's the fundamental question that we've got to start with. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Thank you for your time, and and your talk was magnificent on the canon and the scripture. Uh, I would encourage everyone to come uh, to more of these events, listen to Jonathan Morrow, and and, uh, and it was a great time, and thank you for yeah. Hey, well, with thanks us. for all you guys are doing at Tactical Faith. It's awesome to see all those continued resources and events uh, pop up all over the place, um, which is a huge fan of what you guys are doing, yeah. so thank you. It's great you. to partner with you. All right, thank you. Great. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Hope that's beneficial. Just, yeah, mention that or, like, tweet or send me yeah. a... Hey, mention me if there's a link or something like that. I'll yeah. be happy to share. Sounds good. All right, thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah.